Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Pep Guardiola is an elite manager who has won silverware at every club that he's been to. He also has a distinctive and well-renowned style of play, known for possession football with an emphasis on attack, as well as high pressing. So does that mean he has used the same tactics at every club? Well, of course not. The principles have remained the same, but the tactics have varied from team to team. And in this video, we take a look at them. It is important to note that in each of the seasons at the different clubs, he used varying tactics. But to prevent this video being too long, we'll focus on the general principles that he applied at each club, and specifically on the differences. If you want a more detailed look at the variances within each club, check out the videos linked at the end of this video. Formationally, at Barcelona as well as Manchester City, he opted for a 4-3-3, whilst at Bayern Munich, this was slightly different, with a 4-1-4-1 instead. Please note that all players were given the same numbering scheme to make it easier to see how players in the same position operated differently within each team. Let's begin with the build-up play. Well, this element is most similar between all the clubs that he's managed so far. When under no pressure, all three teams built up with a fairly traditional back four shape. However, when the opposition looked to press high up, the centre-backs would often split to the width of the 18-yard box, with the defensive midfielder dropping into the space created, when the opposition forwards split wide. All of this happened whilst the full-backs pushed higher up. The goal for this was that it created more space in the midfield for them to operate in, as well as more passing angles. One of the slight differences with this was at Manchester City. First of all, a change in the goal kick law ahead of 2019-20 meant that the defender could now receive the first pass within the 18-yard box, so City would often do this. This meant that the opposition, if they still wanted to press high, had to commit four men as opposed to the three in the other scenarios. In addition, in all three teams, the fours pushed fairly high in this phase to create more space in the midfield. However, at City, he had Edison, who comfortably had the longest and flattest goal kicks, meaning that the ball in behind was a genuine danger, especially with the pace of Sane and Sterling. So, opposition defences tended to fall even deeper to mitigate this, which just served to grow the space in midfield even more. In the middle regions, the teams began to diverge more so. In all three cases, the central defensive midfielder tended to move out of the back three to rejoin the midfield. With Barcelona, the fullbacks would be a trigger for a lot of movement. Dani Alves, in particular, is one of the best attacking fullbacks of all time and loved to maraud up the flanks. So, Pep played to his strengths, allowing him to often play as the right winger. And this is where having the false nine made the difference, as Messi would drop into the midfield, meaning that the central space was vacated and the right winger could then push into the centre forward role. Possession was king during this time in La Liga, so creating this 4 vs 3 in the midfield allowed them to dominate the ball in central regions. In addition, it meant that the wide central midfielders could stay lower on the pitch during this phase of play. But if the opposition was using a two-man front line, Busquets could still drop to form a back three and outnumber them there, whilst maintaining the numerical advantage in the midfield. But for the most part, most teams used one man up front, so having a back two was sufficient. How is this different in Bavaria? Against the 4-2-3-1, instead of having marauding fullbacks, he had two of the best on-the-ball fullbacks in the world. So, he encouraged them to tuck infield alongside the single pivot, which would free the central midfielders to push higher up the pitch. This was important, as one of the central midfielders was Thomas Müller, who, whilst being a great footballer, is much better at creating danger up top as opposed to trying to dictate play from deep. Thiago, when needed, could often drop deeper instead when it was required. Importantly, many teams were using the 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3, meaning only one dedicated forward, so two men back was sufficient to have the numerical advantage. In addition, with only one attacking midfielder in this region, it meant that the oppositions had to choose whether to tuck the wide men in or to instead push up a pivot to try and even things up more, a dilemma which we'll get back to in a second. At Manchester City, initially he tried to implement a similar system with the two fullbacks inverting to play alongside Fernandinho, instructed by the fact that his fullbacks were aging and struggled to make runs up and down the pitch. However, he quickly realised that more teams in the UK tended to operate with two-man front lines, so the centre-backs could potentially be under pressure in these regions. So he quickly reverted to a back three in the build-up, with the right-back Walker forming the third centre-back. 
This was also informed by the fact that his only marauding fullback in Mendy was constantly injured and his two backups in Delph and Zinchenko were naturally midfielders, so to play to their strengths, they inverted rather than Walker. This also meant that his wide central midfielders, who were both originally attacking midfielders, could push high into their natural regions higher up, while still having the security of the double pivot behind them. But during the times where they still needed a midfield three, perhaps to outnumber the opposition, it is De Bruyne who falls into the second line, while Silva stays high. Now let's move higher up the pitch to see even more differences. With Barcelona, their most elite players were down the centre, and often they kept men wide to try and spread out the opposition's backline to create more space in the centre, which we'll come back to. The wide men dragged the fullbacks wide, and when any of the midfielders were on the ball, the wide men looked to make direct arrowing runs towards the box, so a lot of the wingers' impact was without the ball, instead making the difference with their movement. And when they received the ball, depending on the situation, they would often go directly for goal. However, with Messi and the other midfielders arriving, they looked to have high-quality cutbacks for the finish as well. But as we discussed, they liked to use width to open up the center at times, and Messi and Iniesta from high aided this. On the right, Messi often moved to join Pedro or Villa to overload one flank, forcing the opposition to compensate and thus leaving space for the others in the center. On the left, Abidal didn't tend to overlap, instead staying narrow so Iniesta would often push wide to join the winger, or often when the winger made his central run, he did this to take the fullback away from him or to find space if the fullback followed Villa. Crucially, when Xavi and Iniesta were on the ball, their main role was threading passes along the floor for the forwards to finish. With Bayern, their goal was different. Their best players were the wide men in Robin and Ribéry. So they didn't want them to do damage with off-the-ball movement like Barca. Instead, they wanted them on the ball to make the difference. So, the inverted fullbacks meant the opposition wingers were often drawn central rather than doubling up on the winger so the winger was often isolated one against one with the opponent. One on one, the wingers would beat most men to work their way into the box for a shooting opportunity. But more commonly, the goal was to beat the man, then attack the byline, and then Bayern would overload the box and have physical presences like Lewandowski and Muller to finish the move. So aerial crosses rather than cutbacks were a big factor. But the roles of Thiago and Muller were key, Thiago often spent more time on the ball, dropping to become the playmaker, but Muller, from these central regions, knew that Lewandowski attracted attention and he used the chance to drift into the box unmarked to often score. At City, the half spaces were the focus for the attacks, and City pushed their free eights high to try and outnumber the opposition back fours. Guardiola saw the potential of having two elite creators here combining with two of the quickest wingers who had eyes for goal. So unlike at Bayern, the goal wasn't necessarily to isolate the winger against the fullback, but provide the winger with support. When the fullback moved to the midfielder, both Silva and De Bruyne would thread the ball through here for the winger who could look for the cutback, or with Aguero dropping and taking up the centre backs, had the room to cross to the fellow winger for a tap in, and often go for goal themselves. Alternatively, on the right in particular, when the fullback was stuck with the winger, the ball was often laid back to De Bruyne for the first time cross, which was often finished. So unlike at the two prior clubs, the central midfielders tended to operate wide more often. And the setup of all three teams played into their defensive phases. Possession is king in Spain, so the 4 vs 3 in central areas plus the high 3 meant that a quick counter press could be launched before the opponent got into a passing sequence. In Germany, opponents attack hard and fast on the counter, so the inverted fullbacks help in the pivot meant that they can stop the central attack as well as shift across to stop any wide counters while still maintaining men central. In England, many teams look to go longer, so keeping the right back central, particularly one as physical as Walker, means that they have an extra man spare and have a better chance of dealing with the second ball as a result. Three different teams who achieved success in different ways, but what do you enjoy about each team and what else did you notice? Don't forget to check out the videos linked at the end of this one for an in-depth look at each team as not everything was covered in this video. If you enjoyed this video, a like and a share would mean a lot. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.